I am the first known transgender person to complete the Triple Crown of Hiking, which is three premier national scenic trails, the Pacific Crest Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, and the Appalachian Trail, uh, all told encompassing about 8,000 miles of hiking across. Uh, it goes through national parks, state parks, municipal parks, uh, BLM land, um, and other sorts of public lands. It was always such a privilege to be able to exist in those places backpacking where you know the objective is you carry everything you need on your back for however many months you're out there so to be able to exist in those spaces in a very pure way was such a life-changing experience it was deeply moving to see you know, to cultivate my own relationship with the land and to meet so many people like Parks and Rec professionals that keep the land curated and healthy and strong um, and cultivate that biodiversity and human diversity. I became involved with NRPA through the podcast uh, on Open Space Radio. I was put in touch with the host because I, uh, this year, I ran from California to Florida to raise funds and awareness for um, groups supporting trans people, particularly trans youth, during the most intense period of anti-trans legislation our country has ever known. I personally am a transgender endurance athlete, and so it fit well um, to be on NRPA's podcast talking about the importance of the outdoors uh, and parks uh, and natural spaces um, and how that intersects with identity. That is certainly something that I am like living proof of, the ways that parks foster our um, identity development as youth and as adults. A lot of my, you know, uh, metaphorical self-exploration happened through literal exploration in our nation's parks. And I think that's a really common experience where people find themselves playing youth sports or, you know, hiking in the outdoors to connect with themselves and their natural environment. It wasn't until I was in these natural spaces with nature and myself being alone that I was able to strip away all of the expectations, all of the projections, and really start to connect to myself and those voices that had always been there, but that had been drowned out by external factors and really think about who am I internally and how do I start to live authentically in a way where my outside will reflect my inside. And that means physically, but also in my actions, in my rhetoric living a life that is authentic to who I am. And I found that in those natural spaces where it gets quiet. I have so much hope for the future. Do we have a choice? <laughs> because it's, the future is coming. The future will become the present faster than we realize. And it's just easier to have hope. Who, it, living a life of despair and discouragement, it's too hard, you know? And people say, wow, how do you stay energized? You're always positive. And I, you know, how do you do that? And I say, I pay attention. That's it. I get outside of myself and I pay attention to other people because that's where the danger is. It's all up here because this will lie to us, but this does not lie to us. And this is where we connect. And that's the job of parks and recreation spaces, people in educational capacities like myself, is to connect people. And the thing that guides me is love because it's so much easier to love than to hate, than, you know, to be angry and spiteful and negative and discouraging. It's just exhausting and I just got really tired of feeling sad and upset. And that's not the same thing as it's all rainbows and sunshine and everything's gonna be great and it's great all the time. No, because true, true connection comes with honesty and authenticity. And that means that no matter what is happening, we have to show up. My hope comes from everyone else recognizing that we have a lot to learn 
and we are all good people and we are all gonna show up and do our best and that is good enough. And like I said, there's no place for shame. There's no place for hate. There is a place for well-intentioned ignorance and there is space and time for growth and learning. And as an educator, I don't see ignorance as as an obstacle, I see it as an invitation. And that is my hope for the future.